Okay, let's uh, use this uh, breadboard that I have. Um, I, I uh, bought a uh, box full of electronics and this just happened to be at the bottom of it. I didn't go out to purchase this in particular, but uh, it came along for the ride one day and uh, I've used it ever since I, I, and I uh, kind of like it now, but they're real expensive so I wouldn't go out and buy one myself, but if you can find them used cheap, uh, they're kind of fun. Uh, so we're going to be playing right down in here, so let me, let me zoom in down there. Alright, so what I have here is a, uh, uh, this wire is plus five and this wire is uh, ground. And uh, this is a um, single inline uh, resistor pack, which uh, is wired such that the common is uh, at plus five, and then it pulls up everything else to uh, a 10K resistor. So this is all pull up. So if we turn this thing on, um, I don't think you can see this. Let me zoom out a bit. So I actually have a little uh, uh, voltmeter built into the breadboard so we can measure the 5 volt line. Uh, 4.83, yeah, you can see that. Okay, so if we come along here, um, all of these uh, points here will be uh, 5 volts, right? So it doesn't matter where we probe. It'll be five volts, except for the very end, which is which is ground. All right. So uh, the first thing we can do is try out one of our uh, indicator boards. Plug that on. So they all indicate high as they should. And um, let me find a spare wire here. If I connect ground to this wire. And let's go back down here. Okay. So if I uh, have a wire, uh, a uh, grounded wire, and I ground any of these pins, you can see that the uh, indicator goes low. So our indicator is working. All right. So uh, I have a. Um, uh, register card uh, that I put some uh, headers on. A uh, female header on the top and a male header on the bottom. So let's turn this off. I'm going to put the device here so power is up, ground is up. And um, we have two pins here, uh, which are write and read. Read enables the uh, tri-state buffer. It's a low true. And um, the uh, write is a high going pulse. So if I... Uh, I need some more wires. If I take the uh, reed and um, I'm going to tie that high so that it never uh, writes to the bus because I want to input things to the bus. And then the right we can give a high going pulse. Alright, let's just try this. We're going to take one of our indicators and we're going to put it here on the register. So now the internals of the register will show up. And I want to see the bus. And so it doesn't it's hard to reach down in there. So like the S100, I made an extender card. <laughs> so this is my little extender card. So I can pop that onto here. And I can put that up here. There we go. So I have the bus and I have the internal register value. So bus is high and the internal just went high. Uh, maybe it just copied it over. That would make sense. So let's uh, ground one of the ground one of the pins. Use this wire here. Let's ground one of the inputs. Ah, and it copied across. Interesting. So we want to 
tie the right line low. Uh, let's use this for the right line. So we're gonna, we're gonna use this for the right line. Tie that one low. So it, the CWAS input was floating, so we couldn't really trust it. Um, all right, so again, let's take a ground and let's ground one of the inputs. Uh, there we go. So you can see that the in the bus has gone down, but the register is still holding its old, its old value. Okay. So if we could have a high going pulse on the right pin, then it should copy that onto the register. So that's here, and there it went. As soon as I pulled it out, it went high, and it copied that value. So that's now in the internal. If I remove this ground on the bus, you can see that the bus is all just tri-stated now, and the internal is still low. Now, if we want to take that um, internal register value and then copy it to the bus, we're going to enable this tri-state output and that will force the bus to whatever value is in here. So that's done by the read pin, which is currently tied high. If we tie that low, then it takes this value and copies it to the bus. So that works great. Now here we go. Tri-state and enable out. Tri-state, enable out. Excellent. So let's tri-state it again. Um, let's put a different value in the register. Uh, we'll need a couple, a couple wires for that. So let's um, let's take one line and we'll tie it low, and we'll take another line and we'll tie it low. So there we go. So we have. Uh, that's kind of hard for you guys to see. So let's let's do it like this. Let's have a uh, high, high, low, high, low. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the value, and we want to copy that into the register. So we need to get a high pulse on our right pin, which is this one. And there we go. It's now uh, copied into the register. So I can remove these now, and it remembers that value. And I want to copy that back out to the bus. I take the uh, output, which is the read, and ground it. And there we go, copies it to the bus. So this is working great. So I was thinking about this little board. We can use this little board in a number of ways. We can use it as a register, but we can also use it as a uh, an I.O. device. Uh, we can have memory mapped I.O. or just I.O. I.O. Um, but we can have um, a board with some LEDs on it that we can write to and this will be our output device. Um, so we can have two registers on our CPU but we can also have an IO write uh, uh, register. And the other thing that I want to do is use one of these boards. Um, what I want to do is um, I have, as you see, I'm trying to get data in and out uh, onto the bus, and I would like to do that with a uh, uh, a dip switch, okay? But I don't want to hardware that dip switch onto the bus. I want to be able to put things on the bus and then, uh, then tri-state the bus. So, what I was thinking of doing is using uh, one of these registers and putting our dip switch, uh, basically removing the um, um, D flip-flop. So the only thing one of these boards has is just the output register. And then we have access to this value, so we're going to put a, um, a pull-up, one of these pull-ups uh, on all the lines, and then one of the dip switches where we can set values. And then uh, we will be able to set any value we want, and then if we want to put that on the bus, then we would just do a write. And that would do uh, tri-state the uh, uh, or untri-state the uh, uh, bus driver, put that value out on the bus, and then we can let it go again. So 
I think that's another little board that I should lay out on that second board that I haven't set in yet. Um, I'll put in a dip switch version, um, but we can use one of the uh, one of the extra cards that they have and uh, not load the, uh, the octal flip flop and uh, wire in ourselves uh, a little I/O. So uh, we would have one uh, of these register cards as an output I/O device and then one is an input I.O. device. And the input I.O. device also could put things directly onto the bus. So, sounds good. We'll have input, we'll have output, uh, we'll have uh, two registers. Um, the next thing to troubleshoot is to see if the program counter works, and then uh, if the RAM works. Um, so in order to see if the RAM works, I think I want to have that little uh, dip switch first. That'll make life a little bit easier. And we'll give that a try. Um, the um, program counter we can probably wire up here somehow and just use one of the uh, indicators and see if it's uh, actually counting or not.